Right now, we're following breaking news overnight as the Wisconsin Election Commission held a special meeting on how to adapt Tuesday's primary to the ongoing pandemic. Plus, President Trump could announce guidelines on Americans wearing face masks as soon as today. We'll have what you need to know. And we're tracking showers as they begin to return to the forecast. I'll tell you how long they're here and what you can expect by Saturday afternoon. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Hello, everybody. You made it. It's Friday, <laughs> April 3rd. Good to have you with us this morning. I'm Susan Simon. And I'm Leah Lynchine. Our friend Josh Breider has the day off. He's moving into a new apartment, taking a long weekend, enjoying a little bit of downtime, I think. Everybody gets a little concerned when, so, you know, they understandably they when someone is not here, but everything all is well. And uh, Josh and Hattie will both be back on Monday. In the meantime, we have plenty of news to get to this morning. We start with breaking news overnight. Following a late night session from the Wisconsin Election Commission to discuss next week's primary amid this ongoing coronavirus pandemic. The commission is making plans to send sanitation and safety supplies to all polling locations to help prevent the further spread of the virus. Each location will receive two liters of liquid sanitizing solution along with spray bottles. They'll also be getting signs and markers to maintain social distancing as well as masks, gloves and sanitary wipes. Members of the commission say the measures should ensure the safety of voters and they don't see a need to delay the vote. Members of the National Guard working at polling stations next week will take training this weekend to learn skills like registration and line management. Those guardsmen will work in plain clothes. They'll be acting as either greeters, line managers, distributing hand sanitizer, or enforcing social distancing. Now ahead of the election, Middleton and Monona are announcing polling location changes. If you live in Middleton, all voting will take place now at Cromery Middle School. And in Monona, the city is consolidating all of its polling locations and all voting will now be held at the Monona Community Center on Nichols Road. Those decisions come as the number of coronavirus cases worldwide surpasses the 1 million mark. The virus is now in more than 180 countries. In Wisconsin, cases have topped 1,700 with 37 deaths. Some good news though, here in Dane County, only six people have tested positive in the past 24 hours. More than 20,000 tests have come back negative. There are now more than 245,000 confirmed coronavirus cases across the country. Ruff roughly 90% of the country is now under stay-at-home orders just like us. New York has the most cases in the nation, more than 92,000, and that state's governor says critical supplies are running low. At the current burn rate, we have about six days uh, of ventilators in our stockpile. New Jersey is second only to New York in confirmed cases, and while Louisiana reported more than 2,700 additional cases in the past 24 hours, that New Orleans is a concern. It now has a higher per capita coronavirus death rate than New York City, a spike that the state is attributing in part to backlogged test results that are finally coming in now from labs. Nurses at 15 hospitals around the country are protesting this week over what they call a lack of preparedness preparedness by HCA Healthcare. They say the shortage of protective equipment is putting them and their families at risk. What I can tell you is um, it has quickly grown into a war zone. ICU nurse Diane Case shot this video inside her Yonkers, New York hospital because she says she's so concerned. Nurses across the country say it's not routine to reuse gowns and masks. They also say there are risks with going public about their worries. My job and quite possibly being branded, there's a, a real big line here. And um, doctors don't face the same retributions that nurses do. HCA Healthcare has not released a statement on the protest, but it does say it will reduce the number of hours for many staff members. Some experts are now saying that coronavirus can spread by more than just sneezing and coughing. A scientific panel is telling the White House that research shows the virus can be spread by talking and possibly even breathing. Some doctors on that panel say they'll start wearing a mask whenever they leave home, like when they go to the grocery store, and they even said wearing a 
bandana instead of a mask. Anything to cover your mouth would help. However, Food and Drug Administration officials want people to know that there is no evidence of coronavirus spreading through food or food packaging. The FDA says there would be no need for a massive recall if somebody working in a food facility, for example, tested positive. Agency leaders are urging all of us to only purchase a week or two worth of groceries when you go to the grocery store. Just do it a week at a time right now. Meanwhile, we do expect President Trump to issue new nationwide recommendations on wearing face masks in the coming days. The president said the new guidelines would stop short of requiring Americans to wear face coverings. He says fabric coverings like scarves or bandanas would help reserve medical grade masks for health care workers. Still, you should be practicing social distancing even if you are wearing a mask. Now, as more people turn to those masks for an added layer of protection, members of the deaf community who depend on lip reading are worried. Mm -hmm. Ashley Lawrence, a college senior from Kentucky, realized this could be an issue. Smart girl, so she designed and created these face masks with transparent screens around the mouth. The window in the mouth will allow the hard of hearing to read lips. Lawrence says she's now working to assemble volunteers to make as many of these masks as possible. She says they'll send the pattern and the tutorial to members of her own community who are interested to pitch in and help out. Boy, and she's only a college senior coming up with that idea. Boy, have I got the guy for you. That is a brilliant girl. Quite the innovation. My, my college junior is what I'm talking about. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> Matthew, single, <laughs> single ladies. Oh, thank goodness he's asleep. He'll, he will de definitely not appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 606 now. Chris Reese is here with our first worn weather. Let's switch gears here, Chris. Oh, my gosh, that was such a mom moment. I loved it. <laughs> All right, here we are tracking the showers and thunderstorms as we go through the morning. A lot of this began to arrive overnight. We're going to continue to track this as we go throughout your morning. I'm focused on southwestern Wisconsin in particular right now. That's where we're seeing kind of the greatest concentration of these showers, especially coming out of Platteville, moving over into parts of Iowa County. But the overall picture is this setup that we have across the country right now. Get this, parts of Nebraska are dealing with a lot of lightning embedded with sleet and some snow there. That's the moisture that's behind the cold front. We are in the moisture that is ahead of the cold front right now and watch how things begin to progress as we go through the day. I'll be showing you that 48 is where we stand right now. Winds are out of the south and east at six miles per hour. Boscobel at 53. Good morning to Janesville. That's where the temperature is at 48 right now. The Dells coming in at 49. Watertown at 43. We put things into motion and here we are at 2.30 this afternoon. Temperatures are right around 60. Those winds are going to be howling out of the south at that point. Here's the cold front right here. You see where these winds begin to change direction. Most of the moisture is going to be behind this cold front, but it moves towards the east. Now we're at 7 o'clock. A lot of us are starting to get in on the shower activity at this point. I expect the heaviest of that to move on through right around 8 to 9 o'clock or so. Fro so from Watoma down through Westfield, Portage, Poinette, Madison, all the way down to Monroe, this this is the time that we will be dealing with the showers by midnight that begins to move on out of here. It's the colder air that begins to filter on in. We go down to 33 tonight. We'll see sunshine into your Saturday temperatures. We eventually top out right around 52. Then it's the warmer temperatures that are set to come. Watch what happens as we move into Sunday. 59 for your high, 65 for Monday, 71 for Tuesday, 60 for your Wednesday. Some of the warmest days of the forecast, but yes, they do come with some rain chances. That's all right. That's all right. Because even the days that are dry, and though they're cooler, they're still in the 50s and close to 60. Oh, it feels so nice. That's it why does. we're all in green. We're springing it up. We're Let's trying. do it. All right. Thank you, Chris. My Thanks, pleasure. Chris. New information this morning. Dr. Deborah Bricks with the White House Coronavirus Task Force says they are currently missing 50% of the data collected from coronavirus tests. The information is needed to help determine public accessibility, timely processing, and accuracy of those tests. That data is supposed to be sent to the CDC from around the country. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says we can expect our one-time stimulus checks to be in the bank in about two weeks. Those checks are worth up to $1,200. For those without direct deposit, Mnuchin promised checks would go out in a matter of weeks. However, a memo sent out by House Democrats warned that some Americans could have to wait up to five months for their physical checks. During this public health emergency, leaders at Second Harvest Food Bank say they are seeing demand for their services increase tremendously. 
Italy. They're experiencing five times the call volume that they normally get. And they're already outpacing predictions that over the next six to eight weeks, they'll need to provide more than 100,000 boxes of food to those in need. City and county officials are stressing that food providers are really stepping up and ready to help, and local businesses are helping out in the effort wherever they can. Badger Prairie runs an innovative program called Kitchen to Table. They work with local businesses who have cafeterias, and those businesses donate and repackage food for pantries throughout Dane County. And since March 16th, their partnership with Epic Systems has resulted in Epic donating 35,000 grab-and-go meals. If you are in need of resources, call the United Way's 211 resource line. Someone there will be able to help connect you with food resources or any other needs that you might be going through right now. Okay, it's 10 after 6. Coming up after the break, construction season is just starting here in Wisconsin. We're taking a look at road workers and how they're adapting to their workflow and their projects to this pandemic. And we're telling you how spending some of this time at home reading with your kids, taking advantage of your time off, could help set them up for success later in life. Stay with us. We're back after the break. Get the Barnes 4-Step Lawn Care Program by scheduling a free consult with a Barnes licensed lawn care professional. From planting to pruning, seeding to sodding, mowing to mulching, and everything in between. We are Barnes. Get started today at BarnesInc.net. Yeah, I'm a home builder, and I go to Nuns. Why? Well, my clients love them because they have all those smarty pants appliances. You know, like those fancy touchscreen fridges and ovens that text you when dinner's ready. Personally, I don't care for all that techy stuff. I'll stick to my good old fashioned icebox, thank you very much. But hey, my clients love those Smarty Pants appliances, so we go to Nuns. Nuns, kitchen, bath, and flooring. Go vote for Justice Daniel Kelly. Who is Dan Kelly? On the Supreme Court, Dan Kelly rejected stronger anti corruption rules and then ruled repeatedly in favor of his own wealthy campaign donors. There's a better choice. Jill Karofsky is a trial court judge, a former prosecutor, a victim advocate, and a mother of two. On the Supreme Court, I'll make decisions based on the law and its impact on real people, not corporate donors. Tough, fair, independent. Jill Karofsky for Supreme Court. It's here. Instant funding online from SpeedyCash.com. Don't have time to stop by a Speedy Cash store? Get cash now, no matter where you are. Apply for a loan using the Speedy Cash app. If approved, funds apply to your debit card in minutes with instant funding from SpeedyCash.com. Apply now. It's fast. Go to SpeedyCash.com for instant funding today. what I thought. It's all going to have to come out. Oh. If you don't have dental insurance, paying the bill can be really expensive. After all, just a simple cleaning can cost $150. And other procedures like crowns and root canals can cost hundreds, even thousands more. But now you can get dental insurance for about a dollar a day from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company. Call us for a free information kit. Our dental insurance helps cover over 350 procedures. Everything from cleanings and fillings to crowns and dentures. Your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these insurance policies, even if you're retired or on Medicare. There are no deductibles and there's no annual maximum. Plus, you can see any dentist you choose. Take the pain out of big dental bills with Physicians Mutual. Call us now for your free information kit with all the details. Get the Barnes 4-Step Lawn Care Program by scheduling a free consult with a Barnes licensed lawn care professional. From planting to pruning, seeding to sodding, mowing to mulching, and everything in between. We are Barnes. Get started today at BarnesInc.net. Welcome back. UW-Madison is suspending all of its in-person summer courses this year, but the campus is expanding online offerings by more than 300 classes. Students will be able to take in-demand courses, particularly those general education requirements. The scholarship deadline for summer courses is also being extended from April 1st to May. 
Now, speaking of school, more than 861 million kids are learning from home this morning amid the pandemic. Libraries, as you know, are closed. So Christina Laurie is back with us this morning. There are all kinds of online resources, Christina, to get your kids reading, and they're free. We like free. Tell us about it. Everyone likes free, Susan. Good morning to both of you. Children whose parents read five books to them every day will have heard nearly one and a half million more words by the time they enter kindergarten than kids whose parents didn't read to them. And a lot of teachers say this million word gap is the difference between successful and struggling students. So it's never too late to start reading to your kids. And during this time, here are some free resources that can help you out, depending on how old they are. Scholastic's Learn at Home program is a great way to get your kids thinking, reading, and growing. It gives kids pre-K through ninth grade free access to books online, both English and Spanish. You just click on an icon and you can read or watch a story based on the age of your child. Another option is dictionary.com's recently launched Learning at Home Center. You can find spelling, grammar, and word challenges as well as fun family activities and writing prompts as well. And then for your budding artists, can you think of any illustrator who's more fun than Mo Willems? Well, whether Nuffle Bunny is your favorite or don't let the pigeon drive the bus, your child can learn to draw with Mo himself thanks to Lunch Doodles with Mo. Each short episode features Willems in his studio teaching kids how to draw characters. A new episode gets released on YouTube every single day so parents you won't be stuck watching the same thing on repeat. In the next half hour we have one last subject to tackle that's modern day social studies. We're all living through a historical time so how do you talk about it with your kids and how much do you tell them based on their age? I'll break that down for you ahead in the next half hour. Yeah, this could season. be an important lesson in current issues right now. Mm -hmm. All right, Christina. And I don't know if you can see behind me, but I'm a big fan of reading. I have a whole like little spinny thing of books back there. Maybe I should grab one and read in between. Same way. See, that's why we were destined to be friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big reader too. All right, Christina, you grab a book. We'll see you in half an hour. All right, and speaking of historical times, as Christina mentioned, these really are, and the Wisconsin Historical Society is asking for that's your fine. help. Oh, to, totally fine. Was it off? To catalog. You no, know, we, we heard you. Don't worry. Okay, turn your mic off. <laughs> they need your help. to. They want to basically categorize everything that's happening so we never forget these days. It's called the COVID-19 Journal Project. They're asking anyone interested to keep a log of your life and how you've been affected by the ongoing pandemic. You can volunteer to keep a 30, 60, or 90 day journal. You can do it in any format. You can write it out longhand, do it by video or audio recordings, or even by pictures or artwork. The society says this is the best way for future generations to historically and accurately learn about the time, this time and the impact that it's had on all of us. What an interesting idea because idea. this is going to be something people talk about for generations. Absolutely. All right, 617 now, Chris Reese, take it over. How's the weather looking out there today? We're tracking those showers, Leah and Susan. Those will continue to move in as we go throughout today. We'll see the most widespread showers as we head into the overnight hours. Here's weather track right now, showing you the showers that continue to move on through. Most of this has been concentrated over parts of western Wisconsin this morning after some of those showers moved through throughout the overnight hours. Now, western Wisconsin is also where our temperatures are at their warmest. Check it out, 50 in Mineral Point right now. Platteville coming in at 50. Bosca Bell at 53. We'll work our way over to Madison, and that's where temperatures are into the upper 40s. 48 is where we stand right now. Light rain is coming down at the airport. You see the Edgewater shot behind you. It's not a particularly heavy rain. But nonetheless, it is there. We're going to stay mostly cloudy as we go through the day. Spotty showers at times, but we'll get this window in the afternoon from about 10 to 4 o'clock where we'll just be mostly cloudy. You may even get a peak of sun or two coming through the clouds before the more widespread showers arrive later on this evening and into tonight. Not too bad of a time for a little bit of a walk. Susan, what do you say? Oh, absolutely. It's so nice and mild outside this morning. Wish we could go right now. Six <laughs> feet apart, though. Just <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Exactly. No, that's true. That's important. A lot of people are talking about that. Mm -hmm. It is. When you go for a walk, you got to keep the social distancing. All right, Chris, thank you. It's 618 right now. Despite the spread of coronavirus throughout the state, construction projects, as you've probably seen in southern Wisconsin, remain on schedule.
schedule. Construction crews are considered essential under Governor Tony Evers' safer at home order. And those in charge say workers are doing what they can to social distance, along with other preventative measures. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation says these projects are vital even during a pandemic. And especially now, more than ever, we want to make sure goods and services are moving within and across Wisconsin. Things like our, you know, groceries that we're getting each and every day or as we need them and medical supplies. We need to keep those things moving. The DOT says they've been in contact with other states to talk about other ideas during the pandemic. And speaking of construction, work begins Monday on Highway 14 at the Wisconsin 138 interchange. That's near Oregon. The $6.7 million project will repair or replace bridges on Highway 14 between Fitchburg and Oregon. Wisconsin 138 traffic will be closed between the roundabouts under Highway 14, and then 14 will be down to one lane of traffic in each direction. The work is scheduled to be completed by July 1st. An auto repair shop in Oregon is offering free oil changes for delivery drivers and medical professionals. Gary Willie's Auto and Tire Center is able to give out three free oil changes a day and they're taking extra precautions to keep everybody safe. Employees say it's just a small way they can give back to their community. If you're an essential worker who needs an oil change, you're asked to call for an appointment. It's 20 after 6, still ahead for us on this Friday morning, so you've watched the Tiger King. Yes. And now what? The, nothing's left. If you're starting to run out of things to watch, fear not. HBO is making more content available for everyone, and we'll tell you how. We could use the recommendations right now. And coming up in our next half hour, we are learning more about how guidelines for absentee ballots ahead of Tuesday's primary election will work. Stay with us. That, stay with us. That's when News 3 Now This Morning returns. With a nursing degree, helping others went from a job to a career. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I backed my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I'm interrupting this commercial right now to give you deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but also my mattress topper sheets and so much more. For example, you can get body pillows regular $89.99, now only $29.99, or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. Go Anywhere pillow is really comfortable. So that's what I really like. It's nice and supportive and it's nice and small. The My Pillow Topper for the first time has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the My Pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. My pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get body pillows, regular $89.99, now only $29.99, or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Ever since we opened Culver's, community has meant the world to us, especially in times like these when the going gets tough. That's why we're keeping our drive throughs open, continuing to cook every meal to order as if you were a guest in our home. We want to be here for you, today and every day, sharing our smile and safely serving with all our heart. Caring for you and your family, it's our pleasure. Together, we'll get through this. If you don't have U.S. Cellular 5G, you could have inside phobia. The fear of losing your signal inside. Hello? Broadcast, cloudy and windy and cold. 
But don't worry, U.S. Cellular has your back. With our 5G network now in Wisconsin and the Samsung Galaxy S25 5G, free when you switch. Connect from outside to inside without interruption. Switch and get a free Samsung Galaxy S25 5G on U.S. Cellular 5G. Choose fair. All right, our favorite time of the morning, taking a look at some of the entries from yesterday's Stuck at Home Challenge. A little reminder, every day we put out these challenges so you and your family have something to do with all that extra time at home. So let's take a peek at some of the runner-up here. Now, this one is not necessarily for the kids. We asked you to show off your work at home spaces, yeah, there which we go. everybody is fascinated by now. That's a great one. Yeah, Ooh. another runner-up this morning. Looks like someone is a big News 3 fan. Now this one oh, is... Oh, I love this one. The yeah, American Girl nice. doll. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize Kirsten in the corner there. I had her as a, do as a little girl, so that's pretty cool. The American girls are getting ready for their Zoom meeting <laughs> with <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and All right, we have to check out the winner. Yes, let's do that. Take a peek at this. Wow. This picture was sent to us by the chief of the Edgerton Volunteer Fire Department. Pretty neat setup here. Oh, my goodness. Wow, Randall. Way to uh, raise the bar on all of us. <laughs> That's Randall Pickering's setup. Officially, the setup there is to make sure that everyone in Edgerton stays safe, of course. But look at how he has the monitors displayed. That's fantastic. Do you and catch a projector on the roof? Oh, quite impressive. He, he oh, that's a projector. projection onto a ceiling. Wow. Yeah, look at that. And wow. then he's overlooking the Rock River. Wow. Quite the setup. I don't know if we can keep, come close to this. <laughs> We're pretty impressed. Congrats to Randall, and thanks for keeping us safe during this uncertain time as well. We are sending you a gift card to a local business. All right, now here's a look at tomorrow's challenge. We are asking you to show us your best home for the weekend meal. By the way, if it looks good, send a recipe too. Just now go you, ahead. You have all weekend to do this one, and you just did this yesterday, didn't you, Leah? I did. I made a hot honey mustard pretzel covered chicken. Oh, will you share that recipe? That was a mouthful. I will. Okay. It was delicious. You oh, guys, you oh. have to check it. <laughs> Try right. and beat me. All right. If you want to participate in the challenge, and we hope you will, go to our website, channel3000.com slash stuck at home to send in your submissions. Chris, what do you got for us? A little peek, perhaps, of the weather today? A little peek of the weather today. We're going to be seeing some cloud cover along with chances of more showers. We are starting out at 48 degrees right now. We'll go all the way up to 60. The heaviest rain moves in later on tonight. All right, stay with us. The last half hour of News 3 Now this morning is next. 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. If you experience bladder leaks, you shouldn't have to sacrifice discretion for protection. Try Always Discreet. The unique design features protective leak guards, which help prevent leaks where they happen most, and an absorbent material that turns liquid into gel for up to 100% leak-free protection. The shapewear design provides a closer fit to ensure total discretion. Choose the solution that keeps you drier and offers a seamless fit. Try Always Discreet Underwear with a money-back guarantee. Brand power helping you buy better. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand, especially now, with six-month payment relief. Buy a new Ford. We'll defer three payments and make three payments for peace of mind up to six months. Shop at Ford.com or contact your Ford dealer to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. You have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Check out Steinhoffel's virtual shopping experience. We provide you with a 360 degree view of our most popular products. So spin all of the furniture you want. Plus browse through our product videos to see and learn more about our best sellers. We also have sale associates ready to help through phone, email, or our online chat feature. And get your online order shipped free to your curb, driveway, or garage. Shop online with confidence at steinhoffels.com. Our story begins more than 60 years ago inside an abandoned chicken coop where our founder discovered a retired teacher living. No home, no health care. So she said no to this injustice and yes to transforming lives. It's this drive, this compassion that inspired AARP. Today we empower people to choose how they live as they age. We advocate for health and financial security. We strengthen communities everywhere. We are AARP, creating real possibilities. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection remains open to serve our customers and communities during these times of uncertainty. 
During Safer at Home, we've got you covered for all your plumbing service needs. Call us for help. We are here for you. Listen, I love to grill, but we don't always have time. Go get them. That's when Johnsonville Flame Grilled Sausage is perfect. Tastes grilled because Johnsonville already grilled it. So you get that famous Johnsonville flavor any night of the week. Wow, you ready? Yeah, let me just grab my wallet. Uh-oh, I've seen this before. Wallet way too big, skinny jeans too skinny. I'll just carry it. Before you break something, you should know you don't actually need a wallet. With Be More Harris, you can just take cash out with your phone. Or if you need to, you can pay them with Zelle. That works? Yeah. You're stuck, aren't you? Smile. Woo. Those jeans are way too tight. That feeling you get when no wallet is no big deal. That's the BMO effect. Wisconsin's spring election is just days away, and there are new guidelines that will impact how and when you cast your ballot. And the showers are moving back into the picture. We'll break down your full weekend forecast. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks. You made it. It's Friday, April 3rd. I'm Leah Lynchide. And I'm Susan Simon. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Hope you're having a good morning. Josh is off this morning, but all is well. He's just moving today. Which Taking some time. Yeah. Not too much fun. Right. But he'll be back on Monday, and Hattie will be back as well. We want to begin this Friday morning and get right into some new developments overnight out of the Wisconsin Election Commission's emergency session. Committee members talked about three provisions related to a federal judge's ruling on next week's election. Elections. The judge decided not to postpone the election, but he is giving voters more time to file their absentee ballots. The deadline for ballots is to be counted is now April 13th. A postmark is not required, meaning ballots received through mail, hand delivery, or drop boxes will be counted. State and national Republican parties, though, are waiting to hear back on an appeal challenging that rule. Unless a judge takes action, that current deadline of April 13th at 4 p.m. is still the official deadline for your absentee ballot. Tonight is now the deadline to apply for your ballot. Your request needs, excuse me, your request needs to be in by 5 p.m. The only way to request the absentee ballot online is by making something called a calendar year request at myvote.wi.gov. It's a lot of information to process, but what it means is you will have to vote absentee for all elections during the 2020 calendar year because updates to the MyVote website take 24 hours. It's now two too late to make the changes needed to allow an absentee request for the spring election only. The Elections Commission says it's already seen more than 1.2 million absentee ballot requests. A lot of those requests have been made by folks who will have trouble getting a witness signature on their ballot. If you're one of those people, the Commission says you won't need it if you can confirm you're unable to get it safely. However, they are still developing guidelines on how exactly to implement that rule. Yeah, so stay tuned. Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway says she believes these changes will help, but she still wants the in-person election date to be postponed until Governor Evers' safer at home order is no longer in effect for us. She says extra precautions are being taken leading up to April 7th. Each of the city's 66 polling locations will offer curbside registration and voting, and there will be plexiglass shields similar to the ones you're seeing in the grocery stores now to separate voters from poll workers. In our next half hour, we'll have more on how the Elections Commission is addressing the statewide poll worker shortage that we've been talking a lot about this week and the countywide measures they're taking to keep polling places clean. Now, all of these changes to the election come as coronavirus cases continue to rise in Wisconsin. You can see we now have more than 1,700 cases, almost 1,800, and 37 deaths. The good news is that state health officials say prevention efforts appear to be working. The state journal reports we're still seeing growth, but it's not exponential. Dane County only saw six new confirmed cases over the last 24 hour period. More than 20,000 tests across the state have come back negative. While the U.S. has improved its coronavirus testing capabilities significantly, we still lag behind some other countries when it comes to per capita testing. Vice President Mike Pence says more than 1.2 
2 million tests have been done on Americans. That comes out to roughly one in every 237 people being tested. NPR reports that's behind South Korea, which has performed tests on one in every 119 people, and Germany is testing about one in 90. We are, however, doing better than the United Kingdom. They're testing one in every 404 people. At least 38 other states are under stay-at-home orders today, just like us, but the country's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Fauci, says he doesn't think this is enough to slow the spread of the virus. I, I think so, Anderson. I don't understand why that's not happening. I, as you said, you know, the tension between federally mandated versus states' rights to do what they want is something I don't want to get into. But if you look at what's going on in this country, I just don't understand why we're not doing that. We really should be. The U.S. currently has more than 245,000 confirmed cases and more than 6,000 deaths. All right, 634 on your Friday. Chris Reese is letting us know how the start of our weekend is shaping up. How is it, Chris? Well, we're starting out with some showers into the picture. This has been the theme as we move through the overnight hours. A lot of these have been focusing in from the south and west. Look for that to continue as we go through the day. By the way, that's a capital view right there. Clouds on the horizon. The dome still lit up there. We'll continue to track those showers, but also also, we'll be looking for the return of sunshine as we move through your weekend, along with perhaps the first 70s as we move into next week. So there are things to look forward to as we go through the forecast, that's for sure. 48 in Madison right now, we have some light rain coming down at the airport. A lot of this rain is truly light, coming down as drizzle at times. 53 in Boscobel right now, same for our friends at Prairie Duchene. I want to say good morning to Monroe and Jane Zoe, both waking up with the temperature of 48, just like us here in Madison. Also, good morning to Watertown at 43. Juno coming in at 42. Here's what we're looking at right now. I've been focusing on the line of showers that developed just towards the south and west. That'll continue to move north and eastward. At the same time, a lot of the moisture later on tonight is going to be behind the front. So you see that over in parts of Nebraska. The front itself is actually across parts of central Iowa right now. That continues to gradually work its way towards us. So here we are. I'm stopping the clock right now at 530. That front will be just east of Madison. Temperature Temperatures will begin to drop at that point. Notice all the moisture is behind it with those winds coming out of the north and west. And then eventually things begin to clear out as we move through the overnight hours. We'll see more sunshine as we move into your Saturday. We plot the temperatures on. Let's take you hour by hour so you can plan how things are going for today. 1130 temperatures will be right around 54 degrees. We'll top out around 60. This is the time that I believe we may see a peak of sunshine or two. See the winds changing. This is the cold front. The moisture comes in behind it by 730. The heaviest of the rain begins to move on through here by 11 o'clock. The heaviest rain starts to leave. Then we see the clearing skies overnight. We'll see those lows in the low 30s. More sunshine for your Saturday temperatures top out right around 52 degrees with that sunshine there 65 for your Monday 71 as we head into your Tuesday and Wednesday will still be in the 60s as well but we'll see those additional chances for rain then Saturday and Sunday though gorgeous plenty of sunshine temperatures will be warmer Thursday and Friday next week also gorgeous plenty of sunshine and temperatures that are staying above average. Oh, yeah, you'll be surprised how mild it is outside this morning. It feels wonderful. It really feels like spring. Step About outside. Time. Yeah, I wanted to rain. go for a bike ride at 3 o'clock in the morning when I came in. <laughs> what? But it just felt so good. Yeah, but that's it all does. Right. <laughs> Inspiring, Chris. Thank you. Uh, no problem. <laughs> 637 now. Students are out of school in 185 different countries this morning. By UNESCO's count, that's roughly 9 out of 10 kids worldwide. NPR reports that when social disruption interrupts education, it can impact kids brain development. It's not just the interruption in class time, but the economic impact and the emotional trauma as well. School districts are still urged to go on with digital learning, even though it might be harder for those with learning disabilities or completely inaccessible for kids without internet. A researcher at Harvard's Graduate School of Education says the decision to do nothing will just widen existing inequalities. Well, speaking of education, parents, of course, are the biggest teachers in their children's lives. It's the most important job in the world but now for many students, they are the only teachers. And now they are not only responsible for facilitating academic lessons, but real life teaching moments too. Christina Laurie is live from her home with some tips on how to talk to your kids about the coronavirus. Hi, Christina. 
Good morning and happy Friday, Leah and Susan. If you have kids, you've probably already been fielding plenty of questions about them, about everything that's going on. Health education doctors agree that is really, really important to do. They say it's critical to provide kids with accurate and age appropriate information. Teenagers are the most savvy and already have access to a lot of information. Health experts suggest guiding them to credible sources to explain the science behind COVID-19. Both CDC gov and the Mayo Clinic are great resources for that, as well as the World Health Organization's website. When it comes to middle and elementary school age kids, health experts say it's important to let them ask the questions. This is also a good real life teaching opportunity to talk about prevention measures like hygiene, why that's so important for younger kids. Keep it even simpler. For example, when your three year old asks about seeing friends or going to the playground, talk about the importance of germs and hand washing. Also keep in mind that your kids routine has been shaken up as well as all of ours has. And that goes for all of us. So how the experts say nothing right now is going to be as perfect as it typically is. And that is okay. Increase your kids screen time if you need to just have extra patience, extra compassion. We're all in this together. Leah and Susan. All right, Christina Laurie, during that break, by the way, were you reading? To be honest, I wasn't. I was working. <laughs> you know, I, I get lost in books, so it, it was smarter not to. Christina <laughs> Laurie, call. on the clock from home. Thank you, Christina. All right, 6.39 your time now. Chris Reese is in for Hattie this morning, letting us know when we're going to see some more raindrops on our Friday. And then coming up, it's our favorite story of the day. We'll tell you how a Badger, a former Badger football player, is giving back to the city he calls home. It's 6.39 right now. Thanks for joining us on this Friday morning, everybody. We'll be right back after a quick break. Dan Kelly. On the Supreme Court, Dan Kelly rejected stronger anti-corruption rules and then ruled repeatedly in favor of his own wealthy campaign donors. There's a better choice. Jill Karofsky is a trial court judge, a former prosecutor, a victim advocate, and a mother of two. On the Supreme Court, I'll make decisions based on the law and its impact on real people, not corporate donors. Tough, fair, independent. Jill Karofsky for Supreme Court. Everyone is trying to do their part, especially now. And your Ford dealer is built to lend a hand. If your vehicle needs service, just call. Ford service centers are essential to your community and are still open. Find out about pickup and delivery options from participating Ford dealers. Plus, they've implemented enhanced cleaning measures for added peace of mind. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us do our part and help take care of you. Your business is your pride and joy. You raised it with hard work from nothing but a dream. And since you care so much, naturally you want to protect it from harm. That's where we come in. Because a great insurance policy is not a necessary evil. It's the best way to keep your business happy, healthy, and profitable. And that is the silver lining. Pamper your business with a policy from West Bend. I'm bad. You're stronger than you know. So strong. You power through chronic migraine. 15 or more headache or migraine days a month. One tough mother. You're bad enough for Botox. Botox has been preventing headaches and migraines before they even start for almost 10 years and is the number one prescribed branded chronic migraine treatment. Botox is for adults with chronic migraine. 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. Go on with your bad self. You may pay as little as zero dollars for Botox. Ask your doctor about Botox for chronic migraine. You got this. Southern Wisconsin is our community. Our home. Our home. Our home. And in this time of uncertainty, we need to stand together while staying apart. While staying apart. Social distancing. Social distancing for my family. For my parents. I'm social distancing for my 96-year-old mother. I'm social distancing for my boys. We're in this together. 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 We're all in this together, and we will get through this together.
Welcome back. Every day we are sharing our favorite stories of humanity during this pandemic, highlighting a little bit of happiness and the people who are making a difference in our community. This is where we want to make you smile a little bit, exhale, it's Friday. <laughs> so here's our story this morning. Of, and it's a familiar face, former Badger tight end Troy Fumagalli. Remember Troy? Well, he's buying meals from an Italian restaurant off the square for families at the Ronald McDonald House. Can you imagine having a child in the hospital with all this going on right now? And then also having to worry about where your next meal comes exactly. from. Exactly. The current Broncos tight end is a longtime friend of the owner of Naples 15 and says it's a great way to help both a local business and families who need help in Madison. Once bad, you're always bad at yourself. Um, you know, Madison is still home. You know, I, you know, I, I love that city. It, I, I, you know, I treat it like my home. So, um, you know, I still really care for it and everything like that. So, um, you know, it was easy. It's, it's, it's home for me. Once a badger, always a badger. <laughs> Retweet that. Fumagalli says he still feels a big connection to Wisconsin and that we should all be trying to help one another in any way we can. I have to say, a little Italian food, that's going to put anybody in a good mood. Yeah, and good to oh, see yes. Troy, too, yeah. even in, in the car, you know, but that's how things roll these days. <laughs> exactly. So. And we also want to take time every morning show to thank all of the people on the front line of this every single day helping us all during this hard time. That's right. Every day on News 3 Now this morning, we'll be featuring someone who is keeping us safe and helping us all get through this difficult time. So today we're thanking the UW Hospital F65 team. Look at that beautiful message that they're sharing. Can you read that, Susan? Uh, please <laughs> stay home monitor. for us. No, we'll stay it's, here. Oh, I forgot. I didn't says, see the top. We stay here we for stay you. We stay here for you, so please stay home for us. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. That's a great message. Angels and scrubs, there they are. Yes, we thank you for everything that you are doing to keep our community safe. All right, now Chris has a look at the weather, and if you're just waking up on this Friday morning, oh, boy, it feels like spring outside. We're greening it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely feels absolutely fantastic. We've seen temperatures start out on a mild note. We're also tracking some showers earlier on this morning. This is weather track right now, showing you the line of showers that's moving through. Now, I've been focusing in on this line that's developed just towards the west. We're talking from the Dells down through Lone Rock. That's going to be pushing towards the north and east as we go through time. In Madison, I expect that to be arriving right around 741, right around 8 o'clock in Janesville, Reedsburg. That'll be coming just before the 7 o'clock hour, and then about a quarter after 7 as you work your way over towards Monroe. But temperatures are definitely mild, folks. 48 in Janesville and Monroe. Good morning to Boscobel. They've been the mild spot all morning. They were at 56 at one point with rain coming through they dropped down to 53 but this is the live look outside right now we're going to have the clouds pretty much all day long folks as winds continue out of the south and east at about six miles per hour i look for that to become a little bit more southerly this morning but there's a period today about 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock where yes we're going to be staying cloudy but that's where i expect things to be mostly dry and we may see a few peaks of sunshine before the heaviest rain arrives right around dinner time guys I was hoping to head home to Highland and just pop up some chairs outside of my parents' window and go mm. talk to them. Noon to four looks like the time I'm going to do that. Noon to four. All right, Mama Lynch, I get out the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned. Thank you, Chris. My pleasure. It, it's 646 right now. Coming up in the morning sprint, we'll tell you when we could expect nationwide regulations on wearing face masks in public. But first, we want to say happy birthday to Resic and all the kids turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with us here on News 3 Now this morning. Have a good day. We'll be right back. Download the Channel 3000 app today. Treat yourself to gorgeous fine jewelry from the Opal Man, the only all Opal store in America. Unique gold and silver Opal jewelry for men and women, only at the Opal Man. Spring Green and Lake Geneva. Have you heard? Tempur-Pedic sleep is better sleep. With innovative memory foam developed by NASA, Tempur-Pedic mattresses reduce motion transfer, which means less tossing and turning so you can sleep undisturbed through the night. But which Tempur-Pedic is right for you? Come to Denver Mattress and test for yourself. Let our expert sales staff guide you to your perfect Tempur-Pedic. And right now, get a free furniture or gift certificate when you purchase any Tempur-Pedic. Shop Denver Mattress today, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. Through all the world events since 1936, Culligan Water has continued to provide better, safer water with our filtration systems for homes and businesses. These days, as a designated essential business, Culligan's water professionals are standing by ready to help. 
The law offices of Jingris, Thompson, and Walks are here to support our community through this challenging time. We thank everyone bringing invaluable services to our neighbors. The Jingris, Thompson, and Walks team remains available to assist in any way. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by attorney Andrew Van Arsdale. For decades, survivors of childhood sexual abuse were told it was too late for them to seek justice. No more. Statute of limitations prohibited organizations like the Catholic and Mormon churches, public and private school systems, Boy Scouts, and other youth organizations from being held accountable. No more. Call us today for a free confidential consultation. We're helping abuse survivors across the country say no more. Let us help you too. Call 1-800-816-0723. It's easy to lose sight of what we should love and appreciate. Milk is for a lot of things that really matter. For our bones and bodies, sure. But also to build us up when we need it. And for those real moments and connections. Because the things we love in life are the things that really matter. Milk. Love what's real. Do Judge Jill Karofsky's weak sentences risk our safety? After a serial abuser and child predator shot a woman, Karofsky went easy on him, letting the monster off with only eight years. When a violent criminal with a handgun and bags of drugs viciously assaulted a female police officer, Karofsky went easy again with a slap on the wrist, giving two years probation instead of prison. See the pattern? Tell Judge Karofsky, no more weak sentences. Treat yourself to gorgeous fine jewelry from the Opal Man, the only all Opal store in America. Unique gold and silver Opal jewelry for men and women, only at the Opal Man. Spring Green and Lake Geneva. Get the facts with Reality Check, only on News 3 Now. It is 10 to 7 on this Friday morning. Time for the morning sprint. We start with new developments overnight out of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Members uh, helped, held an emergency session overnight after a judge's ruling on the election next week. The election is not postponed, but voters will have more time to file their absentee ballots. The deadline for those to be counted is now April 13th. A postmark is not required, meaning ballots received through mail, hand delivery, or drop boxes will be counted. The state and national Republican parties are waiting to hear back on their appeal challenging this rule. Unless a judge takes action, the current deadline of April 13th at 4 p.m. is the official deadline for returning your absentee ballot. Now tonight, tonight is the deadline to apply for an absentee ballot. Your request will need to be received by 5 o'clock. The only way to request the ballot is by making a calendar year request at myvote.wi.gov. That means you'll have to vote Vote absentee for all elections during the 2020 calendar year. Because updates to the My Vote website take 24 hours, it is now too late to make the changes needed to allow an absentee request for the spring election only. If you're someone who is unable to get a witness signature, the commission says you won't need it if you can confirm that you're unable to get that signature safely. They don't know exactly yet how they'll implement this. Or, or how it will apply to people who have already submitted their ballot without the signature. So stay tuned. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. To fill the poll worker shortage, members of the National Guard will be asked to fill in. They'll work in the counties where they live and will dress in plain clothes. The Elections Commission is also making plans to send sanitation and safety supplies to all polling locations to help prevent the further spread of coronavirus. With in-person classes canceled statewide, many parents are pulling double or even triple duty, parenting, working, and now teaching full-time. So all morning long, we've been providing you with some helpful resources to help you out. Uh, right now, libraries are closed, but Scholastic is helping fill the void with its free Learn at Home program. Families can find free full-length books for kids of all ages on the website, which I've posted up on ours. Illustrator Mo Willems is also helping out right now with his free YouTube series, Lunch Doodles with Mo. And then this morning, we're also talking about how to talk to your kids about how to get through this difficult time we're all living in that will go down in history. You can hear what health experts say you should and shouldn't be telling kids of different ages up on our website, channel3000.com.
Dana, coronavirus cases continue to rise in Wisconsin. We now have more than 1,700 cases and 37 deaths. The state, uh, the state Journal reports we are still seeing growth here, but it's not exponential growth. Dane County only saw six new confirmed cases in the last 24 hours, and more than 20,000 tests in our state have come back negative. While the U.S. has improved its coronavirus testing capabilities significantly, we still lag behind other countries. When when it comes to per capita testing. Vice President Mike Pence says more than 1.2 million tests have now been completed. That comes out to roughly one in every 237 people. NPR reports that's behind South Korea, who has performed tests on one in every 119 people, and Germany, who's tested about one in 90. I, I think so, Anderson. I don't understand why that's not happening. I, as you said, you know, the tension between federally mandated versus states' rights to do what they want is something I don't want to get into. But if you look at what's going on in this country, I just don't understand why we're not doing that. We really should be. At least 38 states are under stay-at-home orders now, just like we are, and you just heard Dr. Fauci there. He says, unfortunately, he doesn't think this is enough to slow down the spread of COVID-19. He believes everyone should be under stay-at-home orders to best fight the virus. The U.S. currently has more than 245,000 confirmed cases and more than 6,000 deaths. A nationwide recommendation for wearing face masks in the public could come as soon as today. That bulletin comes despite health officials saying previously that masks do not prevent the spread of the illness. Okay, that is the uh, Navy hospital ship, the USNS Comfort. Of course, it was sent to New York to help with the pandemic, but only 20 people have been transferred to the ship. The Comfort is docked in New York Harbor. It was sent from Virginia, and the idea was to take some pressure off overwhelmed hospitals, but sadly, the reality is a little different. The New York Times reports military protocols and a lot of red tape is preventing the ship from accepting many patients at all. Sailors on the USS Theodore Roosevelt without the coronavirus will leave the ship this morning. More than 100 have tested positive for the virus. The Navy is also expected to announce it's relieved the captain who first warned everyone about the outbreak on that ship. Captain Brett Crozier said sailors should be quarantined to stop the spread. U.S. officials say he will keep his ranking and remain in the Navy. Family and friends of the Arboretum homicide victims are still grieving this morning. They say Robin Kari and Beth Potter were dedicated parents to three children. UW police say people in the Arboretum found their bodies earlier this week. Officers say they have no new developments to share and no suspect in custody. We're tracking the rain showers as we go through today, but still there will be plenty of hours of dry time. Temperatures are also going to be very mild. We're starting out at 47. Winds are out of the south and east at 6 miles per hour. Watch how we warm up as we go through the day. 60s for your highs. The rain mainly comes behind the cold front here. As we get you towards 7 or 8 o'clock, this is when the heaviest rain moves through. By 1130, that begins to move on out of here. We'll see clearing skies into tomorrow morning with temperatures falling down into the low 30s. 30s. Rainfall amounts are not going to be all that substantial. We're looking at generally a tenth to a quarter inch of rain. A lot of the heaviest precipitation will be up across the north woods of Wisconsin and into southeast Minnesota. But folks, when we check the week ahead, they are 70s and that extended forecast. We love the sound of that. Thank you, Chris. And thanks for joining us this morning, folks. Have a great weekend. Josh and Hattie will join us back on Monday.